Well, I know everyone's still settling in, but we want to go ahead and get started to respect your time since it is 4 o'clock. Um, Jennifer Puentes, I'll be announcing uh, Dr. Brian Sather and his topic. It's for online. It's for online. It won't work in here. It's just for the streaming. Um, so go ahead if people are still getting your food. Um, beverages, you're certainly welcome to do that, but we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to um, first, I think this is a great space. Thank you everyone who worked so hard to get us here. Uh, the headquarters of um, Eastern Oregon Film Festival. There's going to be a ton of music happening here over graduation, so think about that as you're looking to go out. Um, today we're having a presentation from Brian Sather. He has 22 years of university teaching experience, 17 of those years at Eastern Oregon University. Uh, he grew up near Eugene, Oregon, and now lives in Somerville uh, with family of four. He holds five university deg degrees, including kinesiology, business, and history. In 2007, he published a guidebook, Mountain Biking in La Grande, Oregon, and authored numerous trail guides in LaGrandeRide.com. Uh, He's active in trail building and maintenance in the region, enjoys all sports and recreations, but particularly um, is interested in mountain biking, backcountry skiing, and snow biking. Uh, lately, he's been enthusiastic about trail running. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Great. A lot of the slides I'm going to have are going to be played on the TVs here, so hopefully you have a good viewpoint. Hopefully you can hear me well, too. Let me know if you can't hear me in the back. Raise your hand or whatever. Uh, usually I can project my voice pretty well. But when I was um, thinking about doing this presentation and I asked for a time spot, I said I want this as late as possible in the year because hopefully some of these trails that I'm talking about will be open and you guys can just charge out and start, right, start our walking trails, hiking trails, whatever you want to do on the trails. Um, and I was right, there's up to about 7,000 foot elevation. Most of the trails that I'm gonna talk about are pretty good, at least the starts of them. So if you wanna go out, or if you, uh, I do have a question and answer session built right into the middle, kind of a little bit of an intermission. Um, so I do wanna have some interaction there. And so I built that in probably 20 minutes into the presentation. And uh, that'll give time too, if you wanna go get another drink or something, that's fine. Um, and, and then I'll just, I have some other things too after that session. So. Uh, anyway, we're talking about the Western Eagle Cap Wilderness, which is right out that way. You could see it if the buildings weren't there. Um, so we're talking about this, this side of the Wallawa Mountains. So in um, preparing for this, um, this, a lot of the trails that I went out and looked at were summer of 2017. And this was a time frame when uh, I personally, I'm, I'm from uh, Physical Activity and Health Department. And specifically, I teach physical education and sport classes. And so they were just transitioning uh, myself and the department into the College of Science. So it was kind of new to me, like, what is a science? Um, so I look up, here's the definition right here. So if I'm going to go out and look at these trails, I'm trying to figure out you know, what scientists do. And so College of Science here, uh, these are some of my colleagues and students. Um, I would start looking at pictures of, um, you know, what, what does a scientist look like? And they have safety glasses. I see that, you know, I, I could probably do that. I figure I'd address the part, at least if I'm going to be a scientist. They have uh, jackets on, these white jackets or something they do. Sometimes, you know, wearing safety gloves. Those are scientists. So I was like, I think, uh, I think I can at least dress the part. I can be a scientist. So I go out and... Um, Wait for it. So I'm out researching trails, right? I, got, I, can, I can do this. I can look the part. I got my safety glasses on. I got my, uh, I got my, um, my, my safety gloves on. I've got some glasses on. And so what I started doing, I was on a bike. I've spent a lot of time on bikes. Uh, in fact, the last presentation I gave was more specific to uh, bicycling trails. And uh, in order to do this project, it goes into the wilderness, and it's illegal to take bikes into the wilderness. So I had to learn this. You know, I had to learn how to run with this kind of coat on to do this kind of research and get the, get the trails and get those all down. So the other thing um, that I figured, you know, good scientists, they, they publish in these peer-reviewed sources. So I was looking, you know, what's, what are the popular peer-reviewed places? 
And then I was thinking, I got it. I think I can do this. I think YouTube is the spot. It's peer reviewed, right? There's a lot of thumbs up, thumbs down. So I started this uh, just recently, the Professor BS show. And so I've, I've kind of wrapped up that season. It's mostly snow right now. But as you see season two coming out, you're going to see some probably some trail stuff on there. So I say, I think I got this down. Um, I can do this with the science. So the purpose of this project uh, was to uh, catalog, get the information on the trails in the Eagle Cap. This presentation is more specific to the Western Wallawas because, um, which by the way, the Wallawa Mountains, the Eagle Cap Wilderness is within the Wallawa Mountain Range. Um, so I was, uh, I did a really good thorough job of the Western Wallawas. That's why I want to feature them here because I covered just about everything as far as summer trails uh, in 2017. So as I mentioned, um, mountain biking uh, was the last presentation I gave for a colloquium. It must have been maybe four years ago, three or four years ago. And I talked about the, the need that I saw when I first moved here. Like no one really um, had information about the trails you could mountain bike. There was a really good coverage of uh, information about the Eagle Cap Wilderness in sources such as uh, Bar Stats, Hiking, Oregon's Eagle Cap Wilderness. And there's uh, plenty of maps uh, that show the trails um, of those. But I still saw that there's a need. Also, the Forest Service 2014, I mean, um, 2000, I think it was two years ago, uh, launched this map called the Interactive Trail Map of the Eagle Cap Wilderness. So there was an online map that uh, existed, had all the trail numbers and everything. Uh, but what was problematic about that, it was based on uh, information in a database about uh, older trails. And uh, what happens is some of those trails on that map don't even exist or they're, they've been rerouted. They're not, it's not 100% accurate. Uh, and so I figured I can go foot verify these trails. I can go out beyond the ground, get the pictures, and actually get a very accurate database of trail information, uh, specific to the Eagle Caps in 2017 at least. So that's what I headed out with. So good scientists have an hypothesis. I figured um, I'd have a few hypotheses. And one is that I'll be hopping a lot of trees. And that's based on experience. Um, there are a lot of trees down on our trails around here. And so that was one hypothesis I set out with. And then another hypothesis that I'm going to end up with some, uh, a lot of blood on me. And uh, I'll explain later whether or not these hypotheses were true. And third hypothesis is I might have to abandon some trails. I mean, they might just be so bad I, I either lose it, can't follow it, can't get through the trail, turn around and, and head back. So uh, with this project, journey of 1,000 miles must begin with a single step. So in 2017, I headed out on uh, the first one I went out on in mid-June. And if you remember back 2017, not too long ago, last summer, uh, there was a lot of snow the winter before that. So it took a while to let some of the snow melt off to even get to this trail. Mid-June, uh, I just barely made it. I rode my bike all the way to this trailhead. Um, and I was just barely, that's right where the snow line was. Luckily, this trail went downhill, so I was able to go uh, you know, out of the snow and, and off the edge here. So this is the Rock Springs Trail, which is uh, this little one right, right there drops down to the Minam River, Little Minam River. And so this was my, uh, f one of the first trails that I hit up that year. So I start running down this trail, really steep descent, um, not in the greatest shape, S several trees over the trail, um, ends up. So I, as I was heading down there, I knew that there was a key uh, crossing of the Little Minam River. And uh, I wasn't sure if the, the bridge down there still existed. I didn't, hadn't read up on if, uh, I, later, I found out there was a project uh, to replace that bridge. But I end up down by the river. There's a couple old cabins down there. And, um, and then I look at the little minum. That's the little minum, not the big minum. Uh, pretty daunting. I knew I wouldn't be able to ford at the place that's regularly you can ford the river. But my plan was to go up the little minum. And uh, so I started going up that trail, not sure if I could even cross this. I didn't bring a boat or anything down there. And, um, and the trail was pretty horrific. It was pretty grown in, a lot of trees over it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think anything's going to happen. I'm going to have to turn around and head back out of here. So I get up there to the crossing, and this beautiful brand new bridge exists right there crossing the river. So even though the trail was horrible, the bridge was absolutely perfect. Like, it was too good, you know. So I was just cruised across there. 
then ended up getting up, heading up the trail again, and it's, uh, the trail was horrific the rest of the way up until I got to Red's Horse Ranch, which the trail from Moss Springs to there is in great shape. Uh, so anyways, this long, um, speaking of, that was one evidence of having bloody legs just from climbing over stuff, going through the thicket. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is you have unmaintained trails on both sides of the river there, a bridge that's a, uh, I think I looked up the price on this bridge once. It was pretty, pretty spendy project. Uh, and I'll take it for sure, but it'd been nice if the trail was good on either side. So I'm going to talk more about that as we go. So that's just kind of the intro to going through these trails. So this, um, what I'm going to do now is characterize the different, um, different sections of the Western Malawas, the way I've um, split them up. Uh, this is just kind of an overview map looking north um, of the, these green lines are the trails. And so we're looking at the Wallawa Mountains, looking north. Uh, over to the left here, this brown is our valley out here, the Grand Ronde Valley. Uh, during 17, 2017, these were all the trails that I covered. And you might note that some of them aren't in the Western Malawas. Um, I, I did several trails, but I tried to focus on Western Malawas. Eventually, I want to get to all of them. But um, anyway, 2017, that's the list of uh, what I got through. Um, and so it was a total of 1,000 miles, 1,024 miles to be exact. Um, and if you know anything about the Wallawas, you end up, nothing's flat. You're, you're dropping or you're going, going up. So a lot of vertical feet. Um, that's the main, main thing that slows you down is all the vertical up and down. And then uh, the condition of the trails, too, can be something that really slows you down. So these are the generalizations I have about the Western Malawas. Um, I'll just go through them pretty quick. Western Malawas, and I'm talking generalizations in comparison to our other mountain ranges or the rest of the Malawas. Uh, this would be how I'd characterize the differences with the Western Malawas. Less people, less bugs. I'm talking about less mosquitoes. Uh, again, it's a generalization. I've been in spots where I was getting attacked, uh, but generally speaking, in other places I've been, uh, we do see less bugs in the Western Malawas, uh, you know, less um, bald-faced hornets, uh, less, I said, mosquitoes, less uh, flies, some of those things that in other areas of the mountains, I've really been seeing more of that than I do in the Western Malawas. So that's a definite bonus. Less trail maintenance is happening in the Western Malawas. Uh, that will continue to be a theme as I talk about the trails. Less traffic, uh, that includes automobile traffic to the trailheads and so forth. Less pavement, you do end up having to do a lot of gravel, uh, sometimes really rough roads to get to an actual trailhead in the Western Malawas. And so because there's less pavement right up to the trailheads, like you'd see, you know, there's a lot of paved roads that go almost right up to trailheads in the, um, you know, the northeastern part of the Malawas. The, uh, I guess the southern part of the Malawas, you have to do a lot of gravel driving too. Uh, there's less fees. Less trail access, less of the panoramic views, and uh, in particular, there's less information about the Western Malawas. That's one reason I wanted to focus on this with the talk today. And um, it's, it's definitely a less windy area of the Malawas than you would get other places in the Malawas. Um, and you don't see a lot of lakes um, and, and, and ponds. Just in general, you don't see so much of that in the Malawas. That's probably why there's less bugs. And it's less glamorous. You usually don't see shots of the Western Malawas in the tourist magazines and, and some of the features of Malawas. You, you generally don't see those uh, in there. It's not that they're, they don't exist. I think the view from China Cap is one of the top five in the whole Malawas. Um, but it, they're harder to find. They're not, you know, quite get to that because of, you'll see some of the pictures representing that. Uh, just another overview of the Malawas in the Western part. This, uh, this will be the Grand Ronde Valley right here. So we are right here right now. And that's what we're looking at, the, the series of trails over there. So all these would be trails I GPS mapped by foot, or in some cases by bike, depending on how I, I dealt with the trail. So I characterized three different sections of the Western Malawas. The Southwest I'll start with. So the Southwest uh, Wallawas will include, um, I just mentioned some of the main names you might be familiar with if you've been in the Wallawas, West Eagle, um, China Cap, Eagle Creek, Buck Creek's a common trailhead. Uh, West Eagle Meadow and Buck Creek are probably the more common trailheads to get to the Southwest part of the Wallawas. Um, Rock Creek, Squaw Creek, some of those areas. So the Southwest Wallawas um, are characterized by rugged climbing, 
The water's a bit cleaner because you have higher elevations there coming from uh, a lot of snow up there. So there's the good snow melt. The Western Malawas are one that I'd say were at least, um, at least probably month, month and a half to be able to get through um, some, some of the trails in the western or the southwest part of the Wallawas. You do see some mountain goats up there, um, but this is the place you do get to get see those, uh, there's, there's smaller trees or there's really alpine feel to it and you get the white rock, the decomposed granite, and it's that uh, alpine, alpine feel that you get up high. That's characteristic of the southwest Wallawas. And that's just an overview of what I'm talking about, you have like China Cap right here. This is Buck Creek, and so just some of the trails that go into this southwest part of the Wallawas. So I, I got a series of pictures here. This is a view from Mule Peak looking east across the Wallawas. Um, so this would be what it looks like up, up high in the southwest Wallawas. Um, like over here, we have Eagle Cap. You can see that right in the center. Of, and then you can I, see, see Matterhorn over here and anyway, several other sub peaks, but all of this here and the Minum drainage is down there. That's all the, uh, one of the better views in the Southwest Wallawas. So this is um, West Eagle Meadow, popular spot to start from. Again, it takes a lot of gravel driving to get down to West Eagle Meadow, but uh, a couple trails take off out of there. Um, and this is what I was talking about with rugged climbing. You get these, uh, these switch back through, uh, through these big talus fields and scree fields, and so the footing's not always great, and you, um, you get these kind of climbs in the southwest Wallawas. Now, this is a view from Wonker Pass looking at Traverse Lake, um, and so this is one of the high pass points. Um, this is taken in late July, um, and you'll notice, if you remember, too, 2017, there was a lot of smoke. Um, this was actually before the biggest smoke came in, so a lot of the other pictures I have will look kind of smoky. Um, but that, so that's Traverse Lake. Uh, we have Burger Butte and China Cap. Burger Butte on the left there, China Cap on the right, and Burger Meadow down below that. That's a key spot too in the southwest Wallawas. There's a view of Tombstone Lake and China Cap uh, Mountain in the background. And this is a view from Tombstone Pass looking down at Tombstone Lake and to the right there you see down into the Minum. And that's an unnamed peak, a subridge of, of uh, China Cap. And this trail is the China Ridge Trail. Um, so it just goes along the ridge, has some great views up there. And some of the trails I was picking up late in the year, this was in October, and this is at the end of Squaw, um, Squaw Creek Trail, where China Ridge Trail comes into it. Uh, so I was kind of piecing together a few places I hadn't been and ended up running out of trail this day because the snow kept getting too deep. So I, Snap a shot of that. This is another late one I got in October at Fake Creek Trail. This is the Boulder Creek um, drainage above Main Eagle, but that was taken from Fake Creek Trail, which is a not so common, commonly used trail, and probably for good reason. It's in horrific shape. And this is Wonker Pass, um, the other side of Wonker Pass. I showed you the one of, T of Traverse Lake, and this was late July, and you can see the snowpack still. Um, and this was one of those, it makes it hard, you can't really track trails by foot when there's snow on the ground, because you end up losing it, so the GPS data is no good. So I kind of had to uh, eliminate some of the trails and I couldn't get back to them. So there's a few trails I missed, uh, but this one just had enough of it poking out. We pretty much were able to follow the trail down and it was a little bit later that we got lost um, on that trail. And then this is another one from Southwest Wallawas, um, taking from the interior, this is Granite Gulch, um, uh, the granite, granite Trail, I think is what it's called. Uh, but it's a different perspective because it's looking west at the backside of all those peaks I just showed you. Um, and it's a perspective you don't always get. Like I was with Bill Grigsby, I was trying to figure out what the, these peaks were. And I was having a hard time just because it was a different perspective. And the interesting thing in the southwest Wallawa is it has a, some of the high, highest 50 points in the state, yet uh, a lot of those are unnamed. So this ridge here, it's, uh, none of these mountains are named, and they're, they're the only one on, that's named is on the right there, uh, Granite Butte. Um, but the rest are actually higher, but they don't have names to them. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna name each one of those. If you guys can go along with it, <laughs> we'll get some names going for those high points. 
And this is a, uh, another bridge uh, way up higher on the Minam uh, that is a footbridge on Elk Creek Trail. And that was washed out, I uh, can't remember when, five or six years ago, maybe more. And so that's kind of a new replacement also. There's only um, the Minam, which goes through, you know, north to south through that whole, uh, or starts south and moves north, it only has three bridges on it. Um, so if you try it early in the year, it's difficult getting across the Minam. Um, difficult and dangerous getting across the Minam, unless you can hit those three, three bridges in there. So those are your only options to get through. Um, and then another picture of Elk Creek Trail, um, which is the one that comes out of Buck Creek. And then this is Mule Peak. Uh, Mule Peak Lookout is a little hut on the top there, which was my home for a month uh, at the very, very end of the summer in September. Um, and so I did spend a lot of time up there too. So uh, West Central, this is another region I want to focus on, and then I have one more after this, and uh, we're going to take a short break for some question and answer. So West Central is uh, basically around, a lot of the trails start at Moss Springs. So a very popular spot to go up, and there's a lot of trail options taking off from there. And uh, as you can see in the, the picture on the right, there's uh, you know, just quite a network of trails in there. And that is characterized by less uh, grandiose views, because a lot of time you're dropping down in a canyon, and there's a lot of uh, trees around there. So you don't end up seeing out as much in that area. Um, trees are definitely denser. The meadows are lush. There are, um, and this is the area where I've been attacked by mosquitoes late in the summer even. Um, and there are quite a few like interesting trails that aren't on the map or even uh, uh, they're just kind of known about by local hunters or whatever and I've, um, I'm pretty good at sniffing out a trail and I can find them and, and go through and I try to get those on the map too whenever I can. But this area does have that. Uh, again, a lack of lakes, ponds in this area. There, is a lot of, there are a lot of streams flowing through that. So this is uh, Moss Springs right here. So you can see how the trails all kind of flow out from Moss Springs. So this is one picture from the, at the, of Minam Lodge from the other side of the river. Uh, this is the Minam River flowing in late June. Uh, really, really big flow to it. And that's Minam Lodge down there. And that's one of the three foot bridges I was talking about. Um, actually, there's just two foot bridges across the Minam. And they're higher up. The one lower is the is a actual you can drive across it if you've got keys to a gate. <laughs> uh, and anyway, this is a nice nice footbridge. But you get to the other side of this, and the same thing. That trail has big trees across it that need to get cut out, and then there's a lot of tree hopping trying to go down that lower Minam Trail. This is um, Lackey's Hole Trail, and that's above Catherine Meadow. That one does get get you some good views. It stays on this, the west side of the ridge and then it hops over into Lackey's Hole on the east side of the ridge and you really get some nice views in there. And you come down to Lackey's Lake, which is a, one of the few lakes and it's just kind of a swamp down there, mosquito breeding ground. Wouldn't want to stay there. This is Cartwheel Ridge. Uh, looking west, that's the, Eagle, the Elkhorn Mountains across the valley over there. But you can see this is an old Jeep trail. You can see double ruts on this one. Some of the trails up on these ridges you can tell definitely used to be a, um, before it was wilderness, that they were driving jeeps and who knows wagons, but it, it has two, two distinct ruts and you can tell some of them were not built as uh, you know, just single trails. And this is Lodgepole Trail and this is a meadow off of Lodgepole Trail and um, uh, Dobbin Trail, Dobbin Creek Trail. And this is Lodgepole Trail. There's a ditch too along the side. There's a section of it that has a ditch. Um, not sure the whole background of that. It's named after someone. Uh, this is a picture uh, from Rock Creek Trail, another horrific, horrifically maintained trail that comes up from the Minam, and a view of High Hat Butte, which is kind of a hidden, interesting named um, point out there in this region. And Dead Horse Point, it's a picture of uh, a trail, <laughs> can't really see it, um, but there is a, the marker out there to let you know you're on something. And this is above Catherine Meadow. And the other region that I have separated out is the northern. And so this would be basically the lower Minam. Um, and so there are, you're either 
on a top of a ridge on a really rough trail or you're down in the bottom on, along a creek or the Minam River, basically in this area. There's really not much in between. So you can see these kind of radiate out, uh, all these trails, it's either on a ridge or following a creek. And what you see are hardly anyone. The, the access in there is difficult. You've got to travel long distances, and there's hardly any water. So you've got to really be prepared if you go into this part. Um, and the cheat grass is just, it's really bad, <laughs> especially when you get down lower at the far north end. There's a lot of cheat grass, invasive cheat grass growing. And it is warmer, so this stuff melts out. Like you, right now, you could hike most of this. Um, but access into there is a little more tricky. Oops, so you can see here, this is a view south. So if you're up by Minam looking south, you can see they're just coming down the ridges, uh, dropping off the ridges and following the creeks and so forth and all the way up, um, all the way up river, up the Minam to Red's Horse Ranch. So that's the Minam River. Um, not sure what time of year that is. Uh, I think that's later in the year. Um, but anyway, that's lower down on the Minam. Uh, and I get excited whenever I see trail work in the, in the western Wallawa, so I take a picture of it. There's someone actually sawed this log, and sometimes it's just random. Like, you're like, wow, it's great. And then you walk around the corner, and there's one right across. It looks like it was about the same time frame. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I do get excited when I see trail work done in there. Um, this is along Big Sheep Ridge, and you can see a fire, which was one of the biggest fires of 2016. And it was started by a helicopter dropping some fire uh, on purpose, but it ended up being one of the biggest fires and it burned out a lot of this drainage. And so I'm taking it from the trail, uh, Big Sheep Ridge Trail. Um, same trail there, picture of it. There, there is a trail in that picture, by the way. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's hard to, to follow those. This is Young Ridge, um, which that's... Uh, that's actually near Moss Springs. That one's a little bit out of place, sorry. This is the goat trail. Took this picture because this big rock decided to stop like right in the middle of the trail. So that one would be hard to move. I didn't try that day. Uh, but that was another uh, tough trail to follow. This is, um, this is the uh, Storm Lake Trail up by Huckleberry Mountain. And another picture of the Minam. This one's in June. Uh, you can see the trail right along the side of it. Really nice. There's not a there's not a lot of river trails around here, but this is one that's uh, really nice, like follows the river basically from top to bottom. And that's a picture of Red's Horse Ranch, um, which is right, right there off of the, at the upper end of the Minam. Or not the upper, it's kind of the middle. And that's a picture of the uh, Spine Trail, the Red's Horse Ranch Trail that drops down to the Minam. So um, I'm going to have a little Q&A. Actually, if First, I wanted to show a couple pictures. Every once in a while, I turn it around on myself. So this is me looking tired on a trail. I spent some long days out there. Some were like eight, nine hour days. Uh, but the thing is, most of this, uh, I didn't camp out overnight. My goal was to go light and fast. And so I usually would have a vest like this, have water, but nothing more than that. And so usually I just try to knock out as much as I could in a day, go home, sleep in my own bed. But I could, I could travel a lot faster if I didn't have to carry a lot with me. And so, most of the um, stuff I was doing, I kind of looked like this. And I've spent a lot of time, too, during hunting season, so I usually had, had a hat on. The, <laughs> that's why you see the orange and yellow. I usually had something that at least identify me, because um, I was trying to move pretty fast. <laughs> I didn't want to get taken out. So what I want to do now is just to take a break. They give you an idea uh, if you want to get up and um, get something. But I want to take some Q&A, and, and then I'll go on to the next section of my presentation. If anyone has questions about trail access, um, questions about a specific trail, you're interested in doing something this summer, um, let me know. I've seen them all recently. All right. In the Western Wallawas. And just as a reminder, I'll come around with the microphone so folks yeah, online can hear us. So yeah, raise your hand. And well, I'm good. Uh, I think I'm good. Well, we need you for Thanks the for camera. Oh, oh yeah. do you have maps of what you've done and that we can access after this session? Yeah, so the question is, do we have maps? Um, the answer is yes and no. So that I've got a database of all this information, and uh, we developed this, this site, legrandride.com, and we had all these maps available up until a couple months ago, uh, free to the public. Uh, so we still have the database of it, but we took that offline just because we have uh, some extra costs involved with maintaining the higher-end servers to kind of run the software that we developed. 
and just the time, um, time we were putting into keeping that active. So we want to either get that available or if we can find some, some venue to be able to make that available to the public um, in the future. So yes, the maps exist, but they're not so freely available currently, unfortunately. <laughs> And I could show you. Is there a contact for you know, accessing or maybe do have a website? Or well, yeah, you contact me okay. directly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you have possession of? Yeah. Yeah, that was the idea. I wanted a, a database of this information. So the images are all geotagged too, so they have locations with all of those. And, um, and then the, the map that I'm talking about. Um, Myself and uh, Tesman, who's in the room somewhere back there waving, uh, EOU student, recent graduate, we developed uh, the interactive map here that has these trails I'm talking about. And then the database, too, we have pictures, and I have some dialogue, some write-up on each of those. So um, anyway, that's, that's the map I'm talking about. If anyone wants to, has a question about it, I can refer to it on here at least and uh, kind of get an idea on that. So we had another. So Brian, are you saying that the the interactive map is not live right now, but are the trail guides still up on the site? Right now, neither of them are fully. Neither, neither of them neither are, are up. Okay, yeah. that puts a damper on my summer. Uh, oh, that yeah. that wasn't my question though. <laughs> um, what would All be? All you have to do is go with me each time. Well, that's, been on some of these. I have. That's true, but I've been on the road and I've looked up one of your trail guides before, and it saved my my bacon a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. So. See, I saved his life. He, I've saved <laughs> other people's lives this year, so uh, yeah. Um, I'll sign autographs later. My my question was like, what's the best day hike uh, that's melted out for like this weekend? Oh, this weekend. It's in the western oh. Maloas. Yeah. Best day hike that's melted out. Um, I would say the pictures I was showing of the Lower Minam, I wouldn't classify as a day hike. If you take a bike, and I know you mm -hmm. have a bike. Uh, you go out toward, like you're going to Minam, and before you drop down Minam grade, there's the green gate on the right. And that green gate, if you take your bike, you ride downhill, and you come down to one of the few bridges. Yep. And that gets you across the Minam. And right now, you can, so it's one of the only points you can get across the Minam. And there's a road that goes up and down that, and some of it turns into a single track trail, and then upriver it turns into single track again. But it's great if you want to just ride, your, and the way the Minam's flowing right now, that would be a good little bike ride. And then if you want to get off your bike and, and hike, I wouldn't recommend fishing. It's probably blowing out a little too much right now. But I'd say this time of year, that's a good one to do. And that's how you access it. Uh, the best ways with a bike, mm -hmm. just to drop down to that bridge, go across it, and then you're up by Meads Flat is the area. Yeah. So what I'm talking about is right, right down here, you have, this is the, this is the highway right here coming down and you this is where I tell you, take your bike right down to the river you cross a bridge right there and then you can ride up and down this and you get up to Mead Flat here and it turns into a trail and so you could park your bike there and the wilderness line somewhere in here and you can go up here you have some trail access out of that and I think this time of year that's the best thing to do is go down there to that north end of the Minam. Okay, uh, yeah. one more question before I give up the, the mic is there like an app like if you're on the go that mm -hmm. maybe provides topo maps when you're on your phone that you could you could download and you could access kind of where you are on a on a higher quality map when you don't have cell reception. Uh, no, there is not anything that has detailed trail information that's gonna uh, not get you lost, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. So, so that that's what we'd like to be able to do with this data. Now, I have the data. I can figure out. We can figure out how we can go with that. So. Uh, this, this app that Tesman and I can maybe get him to start developing it. Uh, but the offline data, yeah, that's, that's one of the keys. This map does allow, um, if you click this little button up here, and if you are getting cell phone service, it will locate you on the map. So that one does, but if you're down there in the Minam, you're out of luck. No cell phone service down there. So you might have, unless maybe you have a sat phone or something. Um, I don't know, I've never tried that. Way well, back. We were talking. You were mentioning apps. Um, I've used Avenza Maps. I don't. I haven't used it in the application of knowing where these trails are. 
uh, necessarily, but Avenza Maps, you can download it too, yeah. so you can have it on your phone and put your phone on airplane mode and save the battery, mm -hmm. but it might be kind of helpful too. Yeah, there, there are several apps um, that you can do what Matt was asking about, but the problem is they don't have my data on them. So, and like I said, the, the trail information is pretty sketchy as it is to find actual something that's a verified GPS trail because what I'm finding is that the old USGS, like some of this stuff is uh, pulled from databases that are 50, 60, 70 years old and the trails have changed or some don't exist or in some cases new trails exist. So um, on these maps and I can see it too, like you're looking at old data and I can see where my trail on, on the ground went and it's actually different sometimes than that. So there are some apps that you know, that help you navigate, but the solution that we're talking about there still needs to come with this data. Question about the Stanley Ridge. Uh, long, long ago, I did that hike and went out to the junction there. It's a beautiful view down to the mm -hmm. junction of the of Bear Creek and, uh, and the Minam River. You were at the guard station? Yeah, well, went out from the guard station, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, couple questions. What's the trail like now from the guard station to that point? You start at Bear Wallow? Yeah, starting at Bear Wallow, at the end of the road. So uh, the trail is in pretty good shape. In fact, I followed a, a couple years ago, I followed a trail crew going out to a prescribed burn, and they cut their way all the way to the guard station. So two years ago, I know it was cut through, and last time I was up there, there was some snow on it, so I couldn't tell the, the condition of the... Oh, you can go out beyond that. There's the trail kind of disappears around the guard station some, right. uh, but then yeah, you can get out farther. And then that washboard trail I did not hit up last summer, okay. uh, but I hear that is in really tough shape. Yeah, and that I think is a washboard trail, and you can continue on that all the way way up to Bear Lake. But that, from someone I talked to last year. Oh, are you talking about Huckleberry Mountain, maybe? I mean, not uh, Mahogany Ridge, yeah. So I do, have a, I do have a picture. This is what we're talking about here, the Stanley Guard Station right there. Um, I don't have the trail beyond that because I didn't do that last summer, so I don't have verified trail. But um, I did come down. Here's Cougar Ridge. I've come down that trail, and that is in bad shape. There are trees and trees and trees. And I didn't think I'd hit any trees because the ridge is, you look at it, it looks bare completely, but it, it actually, the trail sticks in the trees a lot and there was some burns. There was a couple of fires up there a couple years ago. Um, and anyway, the blowdown on that trail, I do not recommend trying to follow Cougar Ridge here. But this one's in good shape, going up to Stanley Guard Station. And so Stanley Guard Station is nothing but a, a cabin an old cabin, uninhabited, uh, that is still in decent shape, uh, but I'm not sure if or what it's used for. There is some evidence that it does get used occasionally. Is the spring still there? Yes. The yep. I, uh, and that's why it's kind of hard to find the Cougar Ridge Trail because you have to go across this kind of marshy meadow and, um, and, and yeah, I think I drank water from that spring, if I remember right. <laughs> it's one of the few water sources around there. Sure. Did you encounter a lot of horse packers? The times I go to the western side, mm -hmm. I have, there's a lot of horse packers. In 2017, I encountered uh, only one uh, horse pack group on a trail. Um, but I saw there was evidence that it was being used, but I wasn't, like the Buck Creek area especially, with around hunting season time, I wasn't up there a lot during hunting season, which is when I definitely would have run into some horse packers that go back into Elk Creek. Um, but I ran into them up on Young Ridge, which I had the picture with the flowers on it. Uh, I ran into a couple up there. Uh, but that's, um, that was surprising to me too. I didn't run into much of any on horse. Wait. Uh, can you explain your color coding? And I was curious about, um, I was curious about over by Moss Springs, there was one trail that was yellow. Uh, so I was assuming it was maybe. Uh, we used a, just a random technique. 
to yeah <laughs> uh, just to differentiate so you didn't figure one trail was another okay so if it was yellow it didn't have any significance of being in <laughs> caution or anything. No, it's just, just random. Anything that's gray is a gravel road, but everything that's colored is a single track trail, pretty much. Cool. Sorry, you had to. Oh, OK. Uh, caution signs there and information. Yeah. What is a caution? Uh, caution sometimes are like a tough stream crossing or the trail disappears like this one says the trail splits stay right it's just an informational um, this one uh, talks about it's a ca you be cautious because you have to ford the river there and sometimes a year it's going to be really dangerous to go across that uh, so anyway it just depends on what what it was um, yeah some of them are just fords of the river where you don't have a um, bridge or anything so yeah, it just depends on what the the caution was. Okay, any other quick questions? Okay, this is the last question for <laughs> Mr. Sheeks. I have a friend that wants to go up Eagle Cap this weekend, and he thinks he's not going going to encounter snow. Can you get, can you give you give an official <laughs> statement on that, <laughs> or that he doesn't need some sort of snow apparatus? Yeah. <laughs> How, when, when are you going to encounter snow up in the Wallawas right now? Like what elevation level? Uh, in the western part, it's going to be around 7,000. Um, Six to 7,000, you're, you're on pretty good snow. And we're looking at, depending on which side of the ridge you're on, how much sun it's catching, anywhere from three to six feet. Actually up high, it's, the snowpack is not, I think we're only going to be like three weeks ahead of last year overall up high. So when we're talking Eagle Cap, which is in the interior, uh, you are going to need <laughs> over snow equipment. You're going to need, you need some uh, snowshoes or skis. Um, and it's probably, it's soft enough, you'll probably be punching through if you try to walk on top of it. So uh, should we call search and rescue now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we'll get them coming. Wish, yeah, need to know where they're coming from. But the western side of the Wallawas catches a lot of sun, the southwest Wallawas. So, uh, this sides of the ridges that catch the sun, they're, they're melting off pretty good right now. But what happened was we got a lot of snow in um, March and first part of April that uh, the mid elevations all melted off pretty quickly. But up high, there's actually a um, decent amount of snow. In fact, I was, it wasn't too long ago, then the last week, I was looking over at Eagle Cap and I saw, all I could see was snow across the mountains. The minum was bare down in the, but everything else is just white. All right, any other quick questions? I'll kind of move on here. Let's see here. OK, so what I have now is just some uh, kind of some generalizations that I've found about the trails in the western Wallawas, western Eagle Cap. Uh, and I'll just call these rules of thumb. Trails in the woods have great surfaces, but there is a lot of blowdown in most cases. Blowdown meaning trees across the trail, so you're going to have to hike over those trees, get over those trees somehow. And especially when you enter an area with dead standing burnt timber, um, you know, they just, any time a windstorm comes up, those just fall across the trail. And so you end up with a lot of, a lot of this. This is what you're seeing on a lot of the Western Wallawa trails. So luckily I've got long legs and I can usually step over these pretty good, but um, it, it sometimes it's pretty bad. They'll, they'll be stacked all like, uh, like, uh, you know, just a big pickup sticks, like they're all across each other, and you got to be careful too. Some of them will move when you're moving across them. And um, anyway, yeah, this is the goat trail. This is a, uh, I just saw this for a good mile. Then all of a sudden, someone had done some trail work from the couple of years before, and it cleared up some. So, and here, this is actually a trail. You can't even see the trail or uh, any signs. Like, these are the kind of times when you got to start figuring out, like, how am I going to pick up the trail. And I don't give up in these. I've found that if you always start heading in the right direction and start weaving back and forth and look for some cues, uh, you can usually get back on a trail again. In other words, they don't just give up. The trail does go on at some point, but you'll end up here and you're like, I don't even see anything. Another rule of thumb is if it goes onto an exposed area with no um, trees, 
you are going to see the trail disappear a lot of times, uh, or just barely, barely you can see it. And in some cases, the cheat grass is helpful because you can see a yellow line. That's the trail. The cheat grass grows like right on the trail. And so the bunch grass off to the side is green and the cheat grass is yellow and you're following the yellow trail. Unfortunately though, uh, actually that's going to be another rule of thumb coming up. <laughs> so what happens, like this is a good example of it. Trail in the meadow, see nothing. And then you can see in the trees here, a nice corridor, good trail surface. Here's another meadow, no trail exists, just doesn't have enough traffic, like nothing is going through there to actually beat down a trail, so you can't even see any evidence of a trail. And then when I was talking about being marbly, these trails that are on these exposed slopes, and a lot of times they're just kind of off camber, um, they're just cambered, and they have these rocks on it, and you're just, you're constantly like, your feet are like this, and you're kind of slipping along trying to get down, and it's kind of unnerving uh, when you get out on these ridges and you see the trail just falling away. So these, um, these need some work to get benched out a little better to make it easier to walk on. This is an actual picture of a trail, Mahogany Ridge, which I was just mentioned. It's up by Stanley Guard Station. Uh, Mahogany Ridge, my favorite trees, mahoganies, are on the ridge right there, sure enough. But the trail is just hard to see. It's just like some rock and you're, sometimes you're dodging, trying to decide which side of the bunch grass you're on. Um, and you just kind of kind of work with it and eventually the trail gets better when you get into the trees. So here's the other rule of thumb. <laughs> this cheat grass will literally trash your socks. I've been like picking this stuff out and I just give up and they go in the garbage because you, I'll have like, after going through like five, six miles of cheat grass, it just, there's so much in there. Uh, it's almost impossible to get out. So that's what it looks like. Cheat grass on a ridge. This is this is on um, this is on Big Sheep Ridge, and this is kind of another example of just kind of trail falling away, um, hard to see, and going through some weeds and then some native grasses. Another rule of thumb, um, and, you know, go light, go fast. I I didn't take filtration with me. I did take a. Uh, a um, so they have a steri pin, right? One's a flash. Um, so it would, I'd use that on the water sometimes. But I was really thirsty coming up Murphy Creek, which is, I knew I was going to run out of water soon. So, I mean, this is what it looked like at the point, just a little dribble. And I was like, I'll, I'll drink some out of there. I'm really thirsty. And uh, I had some intestinal problems from that, but it wasn't too bad. It only lasted a day or so. Uh, but all the rest of the time, I, I drank a lot from streams and sometimes just unfiltered. And uh, for the most part, the water is pretty clean, but... Uh, advise against Murphy Creek. I don't know if that's what caused it. Maybe something else. Who knows? Uh, so I don't know if you, you've heard, but there's uh, um, some supernatural activity happening in China Cap and the Burger area. And I'm talking about these two peaks here. And I first learned about it from this guy living in a school bus down by Catherine Creek. And he told me, I was going out snowmobiling, and he said that the Mayans used to live up here and they had a nuclear complex and it was burger and china cap and i can you can says you can see it this ridge is just decayed and it's just an old nuclear power plant so i'm gonna draw you a map and so we went snowmobiling and came back and he had a map it was it was hand drawn uh, but he had a map of the whole history of the paranormal activity in there i was thinking oh that's that's a cool story he had some stories about other parts of the lawas and elkhorns too but um anyway but i've had other people in town tell me like someone told me they saw a place where a a spaceship had landed up here, completely flattened the trees, and I was like, hmm, that's interesting, but you know, I'm, I'm a scientist, so I gotta, I gotta have evidence, uh, and so this is actually taken from within the uh, paranormal zone here, because <laughs> that, that's Burger Butte, the north side of it, and this is taken from the, the, the ridge that's decaying, I think, you know, he's talking about this stuff up here is decaying, which is true, it is decaying. I took this picture, it's a, a double rainbow. I don't know if that's evidence. I, I think we can explain that in science probably, but how do you explain this? I took a picture. And t it's a rainbow that splits. It's a parabolic uh, rainbow, like a Pisces symbol or something. This was like 2014 in the winter I took this shot. And this is right above Burger Butte, so I, maybe there's some evidence that something's going on up there. I took this shot. This is uh, the highest outhouse in Oregon on Mule Peak. Uh, but everything was just red. This burger peak is over here. And I don't know what this is. 
this, this thing here, but it, it was just pink. Everything was pink. It was a weird, and this is actual evidence. I took this picture myself. And there's some smoke coming up. Actually, that's a forest fire. Sorry, that will go on. Uh, but then right on this complex, there is what's called the gargoyles. Um, this is near Sand Pass. You can see one of the gargoyles right here perched up on there. There's some over in here too, but if you ever get to this, you'll see the spooky spot where um, I think this may be the, the decay that I didn't catch the guy's name, but he did say he was going to give a, a field trip for kids because there's dinosaurs on Mount Emily, dinosaur bones sitting on top of the ground. And there, I was supposed to look for some pamphlets or something for field trips for kids. I don't know. But anyway, he told me about this decay. So just, I'm just telling you, if you find any evidence too of that Burger China, China Cap complex area, it's, there's something going on up there. But again, I'm a scientist. I'm, I'm, I need more evidence to know this is true. But that's the evidence at least I've collected. So here's another thing. Don't expect any valuable information at a trail intersection. And then sometimes you won't even see the other trail at the intersection. I've blown by several with no evidence whatsoever that an actual intersection exists. You'll get this kind of information, a sign that you're trying to decipher what exactly it says. And uh, it might be laying in the right direction. It might not. Like it might be pointing this way, but really it was supposed to be the other way. Like who knows? I don't know uh, if you can even read them in some cases. Or you get something like this, just a post in the ground. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, but uh, it means something's going on right there. This is um, off the Lackey Hole Trail. And then sometimes you'll get homemade signs, like someone scratched in Ambush Point, which I've never even seen listed on a map, so I don't even know what that is. And, and then you got weird things like it says North, uh, or it says Minam River that way. Um, and so you go, oh, I'm almost at the Minam River. It's literally like, probably six, seven hours to get to the Minam River from this sign, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then it's, uh, yeah, North Fork that way. But Ambush Point, this is where I was hiking up, and literally mosquitoes were destroying me. So maybe that's what they're talking about with Ambush Point, but I would not recommend doing that trail. It goes up to Dead Horse Point, actually, so I don't know what Ambush Point is. Um, and this is another example of, I came up this trail here, Dobbin Trail, expecting to come out at this intersection. And before I knew it, I was like over here going this way. My internal GPS, my, uh, where's Sean? My, my, I was in the, the gyre, the, the turtles, the sea turtles, you know? My internal GPS wasn't working. I was like, the mountain's supposed to be over there. I'm in a weird spot. What happened was I completely blew by an intersection. And this is an unofficial trail, not on the map or anything, but it's well established, well maintained and it cruises on to the Lodgepole Trail, but this was the intersection I missed. There's a nice trail up here. I was supposed to go across, the real trail continues across this creek, but there's no evidence. And even worse, over here, these trees were blocking it. You can see there's no evidence of a trail, then all of a sudden a perfect trail right there. So it goes from like nothing to something and just completely missed it. So you, you do have to stay heads up. And I think you're kind of getting the theme here is the Western Malawas, there's really cool spots and everything, but the uh, the trails are in bad disrepair. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of maintenance on these trails. You'll find a lot of trees down, missing intersection signs. Um, there's a lot of, uh, lot of issues uh, related to that. But if you like a, a rugged, raw trail, um, you don't mind hopping trees, that definitely go after it. There's a, a lot of fun to be had. I enjoy it, but a lot of people don't, and that's why I think we see less people in the Western Malawas. Uh, but we do need some type of effort to help um, help maintain the trails in order to kind of, in, I think these are a natural resource that we have that's really important. We've got, you know, hundreds of miles of trails just in the western side of the Wallawas that if, if they're better maintained or there's more information about where the trail is or the trailhead is um, and what, what to do with the trails, I think that's why you guys are asking so many questions too. You, you want to know and you want to get in there, but there's a lot of obstacles that are in place. Uh, that keep us from getting out on those trails, and that's why they're, they're not maintained. Just not a lot of people are using the trails. So with that, I think I'll, um, I'll wrap up, and I'll answer more questions right now, but feel free to socialize, mingle, have some more. I appreciate um, the setup here. Uh, I think we already think the venue, at least. We have uh, HQ for the um, film festival, Side A Brewing. And I'd like to thank MJ, especially for setting up the whole venue for us. Let's give her a hand.
So maybe I'll, does anyone have to, like, one question for the road and then we'll kind of split apart? Go ahead. So where is the Forest Service uh, applying some trail maintenance? Well, there's, since these are within the wilderness, um, there, my understanding last summer there were only two people paid and that wasn't, wasn't a lot of hours. They were paid for maintenance and a lot of that ended up going into the trails around Wallowa Lake and hurricane and those ones that get more use so our area just got kind of snubbed and so the trail use i did see was from private parties some of these pack groups they came through they cleared it out because they had clients coming or whatever they're going hunting they cleared it out i did uh 12 i did 12 miles of trail work myself um over the last summer and so what we have are some private people doing trail work here or there but they the forest service does not have a uh, much of a budget for trail work and so what it's come down to is, um, you know, just private and it's really unorganized right now. And just that's why I saw so many trees because there's, there's not much effort into that right now, unfortunately. Um, so some of the solutions I have, one solution is um, if we legalize mountain biking in the wilderness. And as of last week, because uh, mountain bike groups are some of the best at doing trail maintenance. As of last week, there's a new uh, Senate bill. Um, right here there are actually two bills right now in congress one or one's in congress and one's at the the senate and these are both towards legalizing mountain biking and i'm particularly in favor of this for the western wallawas because these trails are not getting used anyway so there's not going to be much user conflict as it is and you've got so many long miles of trail that uh, if we let mountain bike groups in that would help with the maintenance um, but then also I have uh, some other solutions for trail work. Let's have one day a year required of each Forest Service employee. That's it. Um, I think we have enough Forest Service employees. If they each did one day a year, we'd knock out the whole Western Malawas. If they can trail work at the speeds that I know some of us can do it. Um, so that's one solution I'll throw out there. Um, and then other is just a small fraction of the budget. Like that bridge, how much it costs to put in that bridge. If you even had like 1% or 2%, paid to even like a teenage crew or something, high schoolers, you could come in and knock out that whole trail on both sides of it. Instead, we just built a bridge and on either side, we have a horrible trail. So we need, we need some of that money, percentage of that infrastructure stuff to at least go to maintaining trails. And um, maybe allowing a year of chainsaw use in the wilderness, I mean a week of chainsaw use in the wilderness, you know, you can knock out a lot more trail. That, that Minum trail has trees that are huge so you got to go cross cut saw that and it takes forever. If we could at least allow just a little bit of chainsaw use and one of those mountain bike bills did allow for that. Um, and the Senate bill allowed for Forest Service employees to use chainsaws. And then if we can have more wildfires, uh, that I found that the best maintained trails were where a fire was and the crew got legalized to use their chainsaw. And so they also cut their way in and out as they hiked out, you know, they repelled in, did their work hiked out, they maintained the trail. So the, some of the only trail work I've seen in the Western Malawas was because we had a fire there and they were, the fire crew actually did some work on the trail. So um, I'm not advocating for arson, uh, <laughs> but if we can have more lightning maybe, and uh, maybe that would help some, so, sure. There is a new trails association, the Wallowa Mountain Hills Canyon Trails Association mm -hmm. that is formed, just recently formed yeah. to help some of the trail maintenance problems. Yeah, and they've been spending their time, yeah, in the north and then over, and which, by the way, those trails are even worse in the Hell's Canyon area. There's some cool trails over there, but they are in, in rough shape. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's the Blues Crew, which is doing Blue Mountains. Um, they've been working on some trails up there in and out of the wilderness. Um, but yeah, there's not really a collective effort, especially in the western Malawas, of volunteer trail work. In the Chief the Joseph Trail? Yeah. 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 So, so by Wallowa Lake. Lake? Yeah. So you're still, we're at least getting them involved in the well, thank you so much. Um, it is 5 o'clock, so for those that need to head out, I certainly want to let you know the time. But if Brian has a few moments, you yeah, can I'll be sticking around and ask some questions. Feel free to yeah. mingle and do whatever. All right. Thank you. Thank you.